please welcome Frank Gaffney, founder of Center for Security Policy and president of Save the Persecuted Christians. Good afternoon and praise God. I just want you to know up front, I am not one of these magnificent faith leaders from whom you've been speaking and you'll hear some more in the course of the program. I'm just a guy who has spent the past 46 years trying to protect our country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. But I am here to add my voice to these magnificent men and women of God, pleading for a renewal of our covenant with God Almighty. Because frankly, we are in such a world of hurt at the moment, literally, that I fear nothing less than divine providence intervening is likely to spare our country horrific harm. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about what that harm looks like to further reinforce, if it's needed, the importance of our pursuit of a renewal of the covenant. We're in, make no mistake about it, the midst of an epic struggle between good and evil. My professional judgment, I regret to say, is that within months, we may find ourselves engulfed in a conflict on a scale that we've never seen before, truly globally. It may start with our most dangerous enemy, the Chinese Communist Party attacking Taiwan or India or both. It may start with Russia attacking Ukraine or the Baltic states or Eastern Europe or all of the above. It may start with Iran attacking Israel or Israel having to do so lest a nuclear-armed Iran destroy the state of Israel. Or perhaps North Korea or Pakistan or others will precipitate what unfortunately will almost certainly metastasize as one or the other of those evil forces pile on, convinced that they can do so to their advantage and with impunity. One thing seems certain, that we here at home will probably not remain immune to the consequences of all this. Needless to say, I hope I'm wrong about this assessment. I pray I am wrong. But frankly, we have never before confronted such an array of enemies armed with such devastating weapons, so determined to destroy the free world, Western civilization and Christendom, and so confident, particularly post-Afghanistan, that they can do so with impunity. If any proof were needed, the hostility of such satanic forces towards Christendom is evident in something Trevor mentioned a moment ago. A stunning statistic gives you a sense of the magnitude of this phenomenon. Friends of ours at Open Doors USA estimate that there are 340 million Christians being heavily persecuted around the world today. Let that sink in. 340 million Christians. That's roughly the number of men, women, and children in the United States of America. And this is not taking place, folks, in some distant era, not the Dark Ages, not World War I, not the Holocaust. It's happening on our watch. Neither our government, the United Nations, the church, or practically anybody else is doing 
much materially to prevent this abomination or even diminish it appreciably to the contrary. The numbers of Christians being heavily persecuted is rising inexorably. Open Doors will shortly release their latest estimate. I suspect it will be even higher than 340 million. Can you imagine? The horrors happening to so many of our co-religionists day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, is but a foretaste of what our enemies, most especially the jihadists, I think best described as Sharia supremacists, or the Chinese and North Korean communists, the people who are doing the bulk of the persecution. But this is what they have in mind for all of us, make no mistake about it. And sadly, we are already seeing in our own country infringements on our religion's freedom. And that is, alas, just the leading edge of the sort of repression to say nothing of bloodletting that our enemies have in mind for the rest of us. Which brings me back to why we are here, why all of you are here. Praise God. These problems are so immense, the danger so great, our weakness so tempting, and our conduct so undeserving of God's grace that our only hope is that we can, with Jesus' intervention, secure a new covenant with the Lord. Let us pray and strive to make it so. God bless you.